everyone, and welcome to today's web seminar titled GPS Tracking at the Next Level Beyond the Basics, presented by Sprint and brought to you by Bobbitt Business Media's Fleet Group. My name is Brian Peach, Production Manager for, for the Fleet Group, and again, we will, I will be your host today. Uh, we do have a lot to talk about today, so I'm just going to uh, hand it over to Steve Berquist for Sprint, who will be our moderator today. Uh, Steve Berquist's uh, title is Strategic Opportunity Manager for Sprint, and his role is uh, bringing initiatives to the sales teams and customers that drive impactful results. Steve, you have the floor. Hey, Brian, thank you very much for that, and uh, welcome everybody to the call. Uh, over the next 40 minutes or so, uh, we've got a pretty packed full agenda for you today. Uh, you're you're going to learn a lot about how other businesses are using wireless technology uh, into their businesses to really help them drive some cost and some uncertainty out of their business. And, and you're not just going to hear from me. What's really uh, unique about today's presentation is uh, we've got one of our customers on the line, uh, Drew uh, Runyon from Hangers out in Kansas City. You're going to actually hear from him about how he's using technology and the changes of what this has done specifically for his business. Uh, in addition to that, we have one of our Sprint sales executives on the line. He's going to highlight one of his, his customers that happens to be here in the Chicagoland area and some of the things that he's done in order to help that organization as well as many others here in the, here in the area. So I will be your moderator today. Again, my name is Steve Berquist. Uh, I am a strategic opportunity manager for Sprint. And again, what that means is it means that I drive things like today and I bring these kinds of uh, presentations and materials to you to really help you become a little bit more effective in your business. So that's my, my hope is that you'll get a little bit of that out of this today. You'll learn a little something and at the end have a couple extra questions for us that will be uh, hopefully interactive for you and for the others on the call. So my pleasure to be here today and Brian, thanks for, uh, thanks for the warm handoff. So I walked through quickly the agenda. Uh, I mentioned Joe and Logan will be talking. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't also introduce that Mike Corder from Axsoft, he's the VP of uh, product uh, over at Axsoft. He's gonna talk a little bit more specific about their actual product. And I think this is where you're gonna see some of the true technology that's behind the effort that both Joe and Logan are going to talk about. So I think it's gonna be a pretty, uh, uh, a very impactful session here for you over those next 40 minutes. So let me jump into a couple basics, and, and these are some things that I am very confident that everyone on the call, you're already aware of some of these things. When you look at this chart, and you can see what kinds of things are challenging those people that manage fleets. It's clearly obvious that the number one challenge that we all face is fuel cost. Uh, just saw in the news last night, $3.99 a gallon here in Chicago expected to go up. It's the highest price in the country. So those of you that are on the call outside of Chicago, this is what you have to look forward to if we're going to get you up to the – try to help lower our number to raise yours. But uh, $3.99 is where we're sitting in Chicago, and we're expecting that to go up. Uh, another challenge that I'm sure you face is maintenance expenses. And I'm sure you think when you think of maintenance expense, it's not just that you have to spend the money to do it, but are you spending money on things that happened as a result of the behavior of, of your drivers? And that could be, are you doing brake jobs sooner than you need to be? Are you uh, burning fuel more than you should be because of how they're doing things and that's hurting your vehicles, transmissions, things like that, but expenses that happen as a result of doing things incorrectly. You're always gonna need an oil change. We get that, this doesn't fix that, but when are you gonna do it and how you're gonna do it is, gonna, is really the solution that you're, you're solving for. And the last one here about safety of drivers. Uh, we'll get into this in, a, in another couple of slides, but I think you'll see when you think about safety, uh, most states now are, are getting into this environment where you can't talk and drive and you certainly can't text and drive. And we know in many, many cases it's still happening. We're still seeing accidents uh, that are happening as a result of that. So the law is only fixing one portion of the problem. The fact is it's still possible to do it unless you implement something that prevents that from happening. And there's solutions that can do that for you. So if, if this isn't, uh, uh, hopefully these are the few things that have you thinking about what are your challenges. There's others, definitely others. There's vehicle replacement cost. If you happen to be managing a, a, a fleet of garbage vehicles, for example, those things cost about a million dollars a piece. You would want to get a better stretch of life out of vehicles like that. So there, some of these may not be the most important, but we're guessing based upon this chart and the research here that was done by Green Road, that
that these are probably your three biggest challenges. So let's talk a little bit about fuel cost. So there's a lot of different ways to be able to reduce the cost of fuel. Um, besides, of course, going and, and fighting a political battle and trying to get that cost down and reducing taxes, those are things that are probably a little out of our control, but there's a lot of things that are in our control. Uh, things like aggressive driving. And I happen to have teenagers, so anyone on the call that happens to have a teenager, you, you certainly know that teaching and, and trying to prevent aggressive driving, uh, it happens at that very young stage, but it certainly continues to happen. It uh, doesn't matter how old you are, there's still these aggressive driving habits. And if you can find a way to reduce those, imagine a 33% improvement in your gas mileage. Okay, and again, these aren't our numbers. These are numbers that are coming from various sources. In this case, the Department of Energy has done studies and says, this is what you would save if you were to drive and, and a little less aggressively than maybe you are today. Uh, as far as idling time, and we're gonna hear this from Joe in a, in a few moments from Hangers, uh, we're gonna talk about how reducing idling time and of course, we're just getting out of those winter months now, and depending upon where you're at again on this call, if you're anywhere from pretty much north of Florida, you've had a really bad winter. And uh, <laughs> in this case, you have probably have spent some time idling because you didn't want to shut your car off and have it cool off. And of course, we're going, going to get into those hot summer months, and you're going to have that same effect all over again, where people want to make sure the air conditioning stays on. So idling time is going to be important. There's also just a lot of downtime. And people forget that turning off the vehicle would actually help save a tremendous amount of cost. And in this case, the Department of Energy, again, says about a half gallon of fuel per hour. So it's pretty impactful. And then, of course, maintaining of your vehicles can improve some mileage as well. And this is everything, you know, basic things, oil changes and tire pressures, things like that, are certainly going to help you be able to get the most out of the fuel that you're using. So when I then look at the next slide, and, and we talk here about behaviors that can prevent costly accidents, and um, this picture that's on the on the uh, the slide here, I'm sure if you just turn on your your local news uh, tonight, you'll see a picture that looks just like that because it seems like we find this in the news almost every day. Um, and, and although some of this may feel a little unreal, like, like we're painting a picture that is so bad that this isn't what happens every day when I have an accident in my business, this, of course, looks more like a worst-case scenario, and I certainly understand that. But if you were to think about things that are the smaller accidents, so something that I don't have a picture of that maybe you're not quite thinking of yet, but think about this. Think about how most accidents actually happen in parking lots or they happen while your vehicle is parked or someone else's car was parked. And these accidents may only happen at a very s slow rate of speed, but what ends up happening? They become very costly to you as an organization. They take your driver out of the field. You're probably late on deliveries. Uh, there's a lot of internal paperwork that happens, uh, maybe potential court appearances. These are things that may have been very, very small. And you can see here a non-injury you know, crash saying that this costs an average of $17,000. Well, when you add up all of those things that I just mentioned, you can tell getting to a $17,000 cost is probably not too difficult to do that. When you start getting into things that have bigger injuries to them, certainly the costs are exponential from there. So you think, you know, I've mentioned a few things here and, and I, I haven't really told you, well, what is a connected fleet? What, what does this mean? And, and a lot of you really just know this as GPS tracking. GPS has been around for probably 20 plus years. I know I've been in the field myself for about 18 and, and it was around before I came around. Uh, so GPS has always been here. Uh, as far as most of us tracking vehicles or thinking about tracking vehicles, but there's a lot of things uh, that, that a vehicle tracking system does besides just tracking where you are. Uh, knowing where your driver is at, again, viewing your idle time, hence reducing your expenses on gas, monitoring your lengths of your stops. So a lot of you may have folks that are on routes and your driver's route, but you don't necessarily know how long it takes to do that route. So you, you may now find out by monitoring this, these things that folks are actually stopped longer than they say they're, you know, that, they're, that they've been stopping and they're actually doing something else during that time. Uh, you get a report on driver's behavior. 
So this is, you know, imagine yourself being able to sit in the passenger seat of your, of your driver and be able to spy on what it is that they're doing. You now have this opportunity to see exactly how hard they're braking, to see exactly how sharp of a turn they're taking, or, or if they're passing, uh, you know, going too fast in a, in a particular zone, you can actually see all of that behavior with a GPS fleet solution. Uh, the maintenance reminders and diagnostics, uh, super, super important when you think about how do I get the most out of the asset that I purchased. And just like what you'll hear in, in Joe's business with, uh, with the hangers dry cleaner business, uh, Joe knows this when I talked to him the other day, is you know, Joe's not in the vehicle maintenance uh, uh, you know, position. That's not his job is to go out and make sure his vehicles are well maintained. His job is to go out and pick up dry cleaning. And that has to be his core competency for him to, to maintain success in his business. It's solutions that will now allow him to maximize what it is that he's doing in his business so that he does his job better and different than everybody else and gives him a competitive advantage that other companies don't yet have because they haven't adopted solutions like this. And then those of you that may be driving larger vehicles, you think about things that have regulatory compliance. So uh, the number one thing most of us probably think of are hours of service. Uh, and of course, again, paint some pictures that you hear on the news. And of course, it's always the big events that make the news. Uh, but those folks that may have fallen asleep at the wheel, folks that have spent too much time driving without those required break times, we have solutions that will be able to help monitor exactly how long folks have been out and exactly when it is that they should be stopping so that you're compliant, but more so not just compliant, but you're also preventing accidents and preventing those large costs that we just talked about in the previous slide. So I've said a lot there, and there's a lot of things that have kind of gone into action in, uh, throughout all of this, and I mentioned a few of those. Um, it, it's my pleasure at this point to introduce to you uh, Joe Runyon. He, Joe is the owner uh, of a company called Hangers. It's a, uh, a local dry cleaner down in the Kansas City uh, market. And uh, Joe is a, uh, I won't even call Joe an early adopter of our technology because some of this has been around for a while, but Joe has been a very vocal uh, and, and rewarding customer for Sprint to have because the, the relationship that we have formed with Joe over the years uh, has really proven that, that the strategy of going after this type of business and helping folks that have a fleet he has continued to prove over and over again that whether you have a small fleet of six or eight vehicles or you have a large fleet of hundreds, that there's solutions out there that you really should be thinking about to be able to help your business. So, Joe, I, I, I know you were on the line earlier. I hope you can hear me okay. I sure can. Excellent. Hey, Joe, good, uh, well, good afternoon to you. You're, you're uh, in the same time zone as I am. So, uh, Joe, I, I'd like to, to just kind of – reintroduce yourself, if you can kind of tell the, the group here on the phone uh, a little bit more about your business and some things that are, uh, that are happening with you and the technology that you're using. Okay, will do. Thanks, Steve. I, um, I got in the dry cleaning business about 10 years ago, and, um, you know, like all entrepreneurs, I had wild-eyed dreams, and, and the business plan was to have a store on every corner. I uh, quickly realized that that was not going <laughs> to do it for me. So we we bought some vans and started rolling through neighborhoods to to get some dirty laundry from people. And uh, so our, our business model changed very quickly to a pickup and delivery service primarily. Um, so we go on regular routes to certain neighborhoods on certain days. So if you live in Overland Park, Kansas, we come there on Mondays and Thursdays and, and so forth throughout the metropolitan area. For years, I'm inquisitive by nature, and um, every time FedEx or UPS would show up at our door with a package, I, um, I'd quiz them. I'd, I'd grill the guy who's driving, saying, "Hey, what do they what do they measure? What do you what kind of stuff do you are you allowed to do, or what kind of stuff does uh, UPS frown upon?" And they, of course, would tell me what 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 things are being measured and and observed um, by their fleet managers, and I was jealous. Uh, I knew. You know, we looked into some solutions, and I knew we couldn't afford those solutions. Um, you know, some of them required taking the dash off of our vehicles, and um, I just I didn't want any part of that. Steve mentioned before, I'm a dry cleaner. My focus is to get dirty clothes, clean them, and get them back to the customer. Um, so that's really what I wanted to focus on. So just so happens, uh, this is, you know, over a year ago now that I was at lunch with a friend of mine who worked. Uh, at Sprint, 
and we, of course, talked about our trials and tribulations and what things are coming up. And I had, I told him about our, our fleet, and you know we have six vehicles, so we're a small company. Um, and he had mentioned something about uh, this GPS service that Sprint had, and and I told him, look, I'm interested. And so that's kind of what got the ball rolling with me. And as I was working with a, my representative from Sprint, I came to the realization that. This thing is so easy to install. I mean, it literally, and I'm not being paid to say this, it literally took me 15 minutes to hook up our entire fleet. And just like that, I had an unbelievable amount of data at my fingertips. And lo and behold, I come to find out it's a, it, it is a, some of the same back, uh, backbone that, that UPS or FedEx or somebody uses and provides very, very similar data. So um, what we did... Uh, was put these these go sick devices in our vehicles, and we didn't tell our drivers about it. I don't know if that's legal or not, but we didn't tell them, and we observed their behavior for 30 days without them knowing that uh, we were observing it. And I was very very happy to to realize that you know our guys were not going places they shouldn't be going. But what we did find out was some things that I, I thought were happening. Uh, Steve mentioned the idle time. You know, we've got one driver. I get into work about 6.30 in the morning every day, and, and he's in his van idling, and we don't allow him to get to customers until 8. Well, guess what? We also figured out he was getting to customers' homes before about 7.30 in the morning. So we we were able to track his idle time, uh, the time he was getting to customers' doors, which is way too early, so we were able to correct that behavior. Overall, our our idle time has been reduced and we figure just in idle time alone, we're probably going to save about eight to ten thousand dollars a year in fuel, which more than pays for uh, the hardware and the monthly cost of this service. So for us, it's a no-brainer. Um, we also, you know, from a maintenance standpoint, these OBD uh, ports on most vehicles are very easy to find, and it's the same information, same port that when you go to the service station, they plug into to see. You know, if your tires are underinflated or if you need an oil change or basically any kind of information that, that you need about the, the operational part of your, your vehicle is there, real time, 24 hours a day now at my fingertips. Um, so we bought a big screen TV, put it in our office, and plugged it into, a, you know, a, a, a PC that has the Internet. And so we're able to observe our vehicles all day on a screen it also, what I like about it is it, it, the drivers see it every day when they come in. They see the map up on the screen. So they know that Big Brother's watching. So I think that has that has influenced behavior. We could probably do the placebo effect and not and tell, you know turn it off. But they see that screen up on the, on the wall in the office. I think it would uh, positively impact their behavior. Another one of the questions or uh, uh, things from that survey was safety and and. We, we had a driver who was driving very aggressively. As a matter of fact, we had a customer call in saying he ran a red light, you know, he turned the corner and almost hit some people. And so when he got back in the office, we went back to see his trip history of the day. It was the exact corner where someone called in and said it happened. And sure enough, it was a 25-mile-an-hour speed limit, and you could see him going 25 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, and as he, as he approached the corner where there's a light, he bumped it to 30 and then 35, and then it gave me a warning saying he did an aggressive turn um, at that light, and it was just it was just so obvious what had happened, and it matched exactly with what the customer, or the not the customer, but the person who called in uh, to report the, the poor driving behavior. So we gave him a verbal warning and said, "Look, you gotta you gotta drive a little more uh, peacefully. I mean, you're driving a, basically a rolling billboard that has my company name on it." So we watched him on the screen, and, and uh, his behavior did not improve. Um, and then he had a small accident, and we wrote him up and said, look, if you continue to drive in a manner that is that is uh, aggressive and dangerous, we're going to have to let you go. We've verbally warned you. We've written, warned you. And and then he, he did not improve. We ended up having to let him go. Um, so I think um, from the safety standpoint, it has been uh, very, very positive for us as well. So 
the ease of installation for me was the big selling point. I was able to take that that go sick device, plug it in my vehicle, and I was operational um, within a day. And we've, it's more than paid for itself with fuel costs uh, by by decreasing our idle time and the the less aggressive driving. I'm not sure how to quantify that part of it, but I know that the driving is uh, is much better now. Uh, we have not replaced, knock on wood, a transmission. Um, in the last year or so since we installed the system, and transmissions on our vehicles are anywhere from six to $8,000. So that's a big cost savings for us as well. Um, anecdotally, I have a daughter who turned 16 a couple days ago. Uh, they're able to drive when they're 15 in Kansas, and I didn't tell her, but I put the, one of the Go 6 devices in her vehicle for about a week and was very pleased to see she drives to school that um, – She's not speeding. She's not driving aggressively. Uh, maybe she, when she gets a little more confident and and, uh, and a little more aggressive as she gets older, that'll change. But for now, I was very happy with that behavior. So I um, I've been very happy. I think it's paid for itself. Um, it, it helps represent our company well. I think by by decreasing the amount of aggressive uh, driving. And um, you know, I'm, I'm open for any questions. I am going to have to drop off after about 15 minutes or so. So if anyone has any questions, they can certainly get them to the folks at Sprint, and they can get them to me as well. But that's kind of my story. Joe, that's that's wonderful, and, and thank you for, for sharing that. I'm going to ask you one quick question that uh, you and I talked a little bit about the other day. And, and again, everyone on the phone, as you, as you heard, I'm, I'm a sales guy at heart, and I, I like to to do things that have something to do with driving revenue. And, of course, if it's not just revenue for my company and myself, I, I really am all about driving revenue for my customers because I know if, if, Joe, you're making more money, uh, you're going to be around in business, you're going to be a Sprint customer for a long time to come. So it's a good thing for me to help you make more money. And you and I talked the other day about how this helped you, uh, again, somewhat anecdotally, but has helped you make some additional money. Can you just share that little story with everyone real quick? Yeah, we we have uh, a pickup and delivery business where most customers are on a scheduled route. We go by every Monday and Thursday or every Tuesday and Friday. There are some customers who are not as frequent and or forget to leave their clothes out for us to pick up, and they'll oftentimes call in saying, hey, has my driver come by yet? Um, for us now, versus calling or texting the driver, of course, they're not supposed to text back to us until they get to the next stop. There was a delay in there, whereas now we can literally look at the screen while the customer is on the phone and say, you're fine. Uh, Chris, your driver is, is probably 30 minutes out, so if you can go ahead and get your bag outside, he'll be there to pick it up. Or conversely, we can say, you know what, he's already come by. Um, let's see if we can get him to swing back by on his way in. Or, you know, we have a, a store at this particular location. Can you bring the bag by there and we'll deliver it on Friday? Um, so for us... It's been a level of service that, that we before could not provide to our customers, which translates into increased sales. If we were not able to go by and pick up their bag, maybe they take it to a competitor. I don't know. But one thing for sure, we are getting it now, and that might not have been the case uh, a year ago or more. Excellent. Th Joe, thank you for that. And. Uh... This reminds me of if, if anyone out there watches the show The Prophet, uh, it's a, I believe a show on NBC, and, and the, the guy, I, his name escapes me now, but he talks about three things that are most important to every company, and that is you know your product, your people, and your process. And he always looks for ways to figure out how he improves those three in order to make companies more successful. And I think the story that you just heard here with Joe, uh, you know, Joe's very worried about his product. Uh, you know, his, his product is really his service. And if he can eliminate driver behavior, make things better, he has a better brand in the marketplace. Uh, and certainly as people in the process, you can see how this solution has helped him change some things, make things safer for his people, but also less costly uh, to his overall business, thus making him more profitable. So, uh, Joe, maybe you should uh, be a, a, a template for that show, The Profit, although he won't invest in your company if you're doing things so well already. <laughs> Who knows, right? <laughs> well, Joe, thank you very much for uh, for your time. I do know you need to drop, and, and as Joe mentioned, if uh, 
if you have some additional questions uh, in the lower right hand corner, you're able to ask those questions. Uh, so feel free to uh, pop a question in there and we will uh, address those near the end of, the, of today's presentation. Uh, and if there's things that uh, we need to get to Joe personally, Joe's promised to get back to us within a day or two and be able to get those back to the uh, folks on the call. So Joe, thank you again for uh, not only your time today, but also for being a, a very loyal Sprint customer. We do appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to now turn it over to uh, Logan Kent. And uh, Logan, as uh, you may have recall, I mentioned, was a, uh, a local sales executive uh, with Sprint here in the Chicago office. And uh, Logan's been working with a company called Clark Environmental. Uh, and for anyone who knows anything about mosquitoes, and if you're, again, in the Chicago area, you probably have seen these folks at some point in time, but pretty much no matter where you're at, I know you have a mosquito problem. Uh, you don't have it yet, but if we had this call in a month from now, you would probably be asking, where is Clark Environmental? I'd like to call them up, because uh, we're going to have a nasty mosquito season this year. We know that. And uh, Logan was a, a, had an opportunity to work with Clark Environmental uh, for some time now and, and provided a few different solutions for them. They had a few very unique problems uh, that we were able to solve for them. And uh, I want to introduce Logan. Uh, Logan, can you hear me on the call here? I sure can. Can you hear me? Excellent. I sure can. So, Logan, if you can start out, just give us a little idea of what Clark Environmental uh, is all about. If you can, a little bit more about their business. Uh, I know people on the, on the screen can kind of see it, but if you can articulate that a little bit better for us, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. So, Clark Environmental, uh, as Steve was saying, is a Chicago-based company that services, uh, you know, three regions across North America. And they actually manufacture not only the um, liquid compound that is getting sprayed into the air to prevent uh, these mosquito infestations, you know, the biggest problem for any uh, outdoor person in the world. But uh, not only do they manufacture that, that uh, liquid chemical, but they're also manufacturing the sprayers on the back of their vehicle, as you see in the picture there. Uh, so that's one of their Chevy trucks that has their sprayer in the back. But their primary customers are municipalities, so they work with local governments on spraying in neighborhoods and, and uh, also do residential work as well. So they do have 12 different offices across North America in three regions that I said, and they have a fleet of over 130 vehicles with trucks, ATVs, and also uh, their newer fleet involves Prius vehicles to be a little more environmentally sound. And Clark Environmental's big initiative is being environmentally friendly, not only with the chemicals they're spraying in the air, but also with their fleet. Because as we all know, a fleet in operation is, can produce harmful uh, effects on our environment. So they want to minimize that impact as much as possible. So Clark has been a large and longstanding customer with Sprint for many, many years. And their biggest issue was since they're a seasonal business, you know, especially here in Chicago where we have a winter season without um, mosquitoes and then a big, heavy really busy summer season for them is that not only is their business seasonal, but also their employees are seasonal. So when you think about their business and what their employees do, they're not so much in the mosquito business when they have backpacks walking around people's houses doing, you know, one-off jobs. These employees might get hired for one season and one season only, and their only job is to drive that vehicle you see pictured as safely, efficiently, and responsibly as possible. So we had worked with Clark Environmental in the past. Um, they have a GPS tracking application that runs on their Sprint handsets. And that was only depicting really half the, half the environment of what was going on. So they now wanted to analyze what is actually going on with our asset and the person behind the wheel driving that asset through these neighborhoods. So we work with Clark Environmental from a consult consultative approach and just trying to find out what exactly are we trying to do. And the biggest thing for Clark Environmental that they wanted to accomplish was be able to quantitatively measure the employees they were hiring season after season for the job they were doing, and that job was driving the vehicle. So the big question was, how do we measure on a number scale? Like in school, we got A's, B's, and C's. How do we measure employees who are driving a vehicle without any sort of telematic solution today? Well, so that's what we worked on with Clark Environmental was implementing the same exact solution that Joe Runyon is using over at Harris Cleaners um, by implementing this solution that is a quick, easy plug-and-play that gives them all that data at, the, at their fingertips. Because they, what they wanted to know was either immediately or at the end of the season, they not only want to know where and when the uh, drivers were at the specific place, but they also want to know how well are they driving the, driving the vehicle. Is there, are they hard braking? Are they speeding? Are they harsh accelerating? 
Are they turning too quickly? Are they letting it idle for too long? Those are all things that are driving costs through the roof for Clark Environmental. So they wanted visibility into those um, to those main metrics. So that was a big problem that Clark Environmental and, uh, and Sprint worked on getting solved for their season last year. And they have since uh, in completely installed the solution in all 130 vehicles in their fleet, including the ATVs, which is pretty cool. And uh, Steve, am I kind of does that kind of give a good introduction to the company and also what they do? Is there anything you wanted to jump in and ask there real quick? No, I, I think that's a really great uh, you know high level overview. And I you know, just to, to maybe quickly recap. Whether you're spraying mosquito spray, whether you're driving uh, clean or dirty clothes back and forth, or, or picking up dirt, or driving people uh, packages, you know, I think that the common theme is that you know there's fleets of vehicles that we all want to know where they are, and not only do we want to know where they are, that's the typical GPS that we've heard about for 20 years, but we want to know what they're doing, and if we can understand what they're doing. And I think you just mentioned it really well here, Logan, how they're doing it. It'll give us an opportunity to improve the processes that we have in place today. So, mm -hmm. so uh, excellent background. So tell me a little bit more, uh, you know, I've got this outcome slide here on the screen and I, I see a map that this looks like it's kind of filled with a bunch of purple lines. And uh, tell me a little mm -hmm. bit about what this represents here, Logan. Sure, yeah, absolutely. So. What this map represents, this is just a screenshot of one of Clark Environmental's reports with their uh, fleet solution. So what they can tell is that, as I mentioned earlier, they're driving around all these trucks that have mosquito sprayers on the back of them. And what the driver is doing is once he knows he's in his spray area, so his customer area that he needs to um, spray this mosquito repellent, is they literally just flip a switch on in the vehicle, and as that uh, vehicle is in motion, the sprayer is automatically going. So the, the driver is not controlling the sprayer. The vehicle controls the sprayer. The driver doesn't need to tell it on or off. And one of the things that you guys on the call could probably imagine is you don't want to be spraying an area that you shouldn't be spraying because the common conception in mosquito control is that it's harmful chemicals. When you have neighborhood areas with small children, concerned parents probably don't want that chemical being sprayed throughout their neighborhoods if it's not supposed to be. Or vice versa, they shouldn't be spraying where uh, in areas that their customers aren't paying to give mosquito treatment. So what this map depicts is their solution can actually tell when that mosquito sprayer in the back of the truck is on or off. So that if a customer calls in, similar to you know what Joe was saying with his customers calling in wanting to know, hey, did this something get picked up? Did it get delivered? Same thing with uh, Clark Environmental. They have sometimes their customers or non-customers call in and ask, hey, we saw one of your vehicles. It wasn't spraying. I believe they were supposed to be spraying or the opposite. They were spraying. They aren't supposed to be spraying, and it's a, you know, kind of a peeved off customer. But what this does is actually show it's a proof of service of where the vehicle exactly sprayed in the exact location that it was spraying in at the exact time that it was spraying. So it's an extremely powerful report for Clark Environmental to show to their own customers and for their own re internal reporting and uh, grading process for their, their drivers to know you're spraying either correctly on your route or incorrectly, and, and they make the adjustment from there. Wonderful. That's, uh, th that's really good information there, Logan, and, and what a uh, tremendous amount of, <laughs> of benefit that technology can give them from, from the old days of just randomly driving around and not knowing if what they were doing is really working uh, to now being able to truly understand that the, the things are working, the sprayers are working, and the vehicles are being, uh, again, it's their name, it's got their brand on the side of that vehicle. So when folks see that vehicle drive by, the, the you know, impression that that leaves on people as a positive impact is, is really great. So uh, this, this was good. I wanna check to see if there was any additional questions uh, that may have come in. Yeah, I will say while you're checking there, Steve, just to just to conclude on uh, with Park Environmental is after installing the solution, not only the fuel and maintenance savings there that they're you know conservatively estimating about a hundred thousand dollars a year, but also with um, their employees and being able, like I said, quantitatively quantitative, quantitatively measure, um, they can now sit down with each and every one of their drivers and give them a score, a driver scorecard, and says on a scale of you know zero to a hundred you scored an 86 or a 96 or a 76, something like that, and be able to coach that driver to become a better employee for their um, for Clark Environmental. So there are a number of uh, very positive impacts and, and uh, cost-cutting impact that is delivered for Clark Environmental, and 
and they're absolutely overjoyed with the system. And, and just like Joe, a very loyal and long-time Sprint customer. So um, I'm always open for questions, and I'm sure that uh, Steve and the rest of the Sprint team will be able to funnel those through to me and even to my end customer, and I'd be happy to help out where I can. So that's all I've got for you there, Steve, though. Good. Hey, uh, Logan, one quick question here that came in, and it's asking, how does sure. coverage how does coverage for the wireless the, uh, yeah, it looks like the wireless device uh, matters. So it, I'm, I'm maybe re paraphrase, I guess. It, if there's no coverage, yet this is in the vehicle, mm -hmm. how are you getting back statistics on what's happening? Because I'm, I'm guessing coverage is not always ubiquitous. Right. That's a great question. And that's a, a big, always a big concern with some of the new customers I'm con consulting with is that. You know, wireless networks, just in the nature of our business, we can't be everywhere. You know, there's mountains, there's hills, there's tunnels, there's caves. There's all sorts of things that impact wireless coverage. And the great part about machine-to-machine -machine solutions, especially the ones you'll see from Sprint, is that it has a feature what's known as store and forward. So that device installed in the vehicle is always collecting information whether or not it's in wireless coverage um, in that area. And when it, let's say, for instance, it's driving through a mountain without any any wireless coverage, nothing, you know, nothing in the remote area, it's always going to be collecting that information from the vehicle, whether the, the sprayer is on or off or how fast it's going. And then once it reaches back into cellular coverage, it's going to then uh, forward that information out over the network back to the portal. So it might not be that instant information you're used to where you're going to get it, you know, 99% of the time. But in that one-off instance, it's out of wireless coverage. You will always have that information that is being collected from the vehicle. Awesome! Wow, that is uh, that is great. So, uh, Logan, thank you again for taking time out of your day. I, I know you're extremely busy as well, helping customers all the time. Uh, so, thank you for taking a few minutes out. I understand that, that you need to drop here as well. Um, we will collect some additional questions if they come in, and I'll make sure that those get fed back to you, and then responses back to the appropriate people. So, uh, Logan, thanks again for your uh, for your help. And if you see Clark Environmental, give them my home address so I can eliminate some of the mosquitoes this summer, would you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do, Steve. We'll do. Thanks. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, and our our last speaker of the day here. I I really have a, a, a real honor here to be able to uh, introduce to you today, Mike Quarter. And and Mike, as I mentioned, is our VP of uh, Product Management uh, from a company called Axsoft. Uh, and Axsoft's been a, a partner of of Sprint for many years, as long as I can remember. In fact, they're actually our, our first Sprint build partner, meaning that when you can buy Axsoft, it can actually just show up on your Sprint invoice and you don't have to have a second vendor uh, that you would have to cut a check to. Uh, but Mike's been working with companies uh, for many years, really understanding their business and trying to help them leverage wireless technology, you know, technology to enhance their operations. So uh, my pleasure here to introduce uh, Mike Corder from Axsoft. Mike? Oh, thanks, Steve. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everyone. And, um, yeah, Steve was saying we've been working with Sprint for a long time and providing different types of solutions to customers, you know, all the way back to when handsets just had the basic GPS on them, and then today with smartphones, uh, tablets. And then as technology continues to improve with the black box type information like what we've been talking about today, you've got access to a lot of, a lot more information. And we, what I like to do, or my kind of role here, is to make sure that we can bring as much value to, to you as possible uh, with the information that's available. Um, go ahead and move on to the next slide. And then again, as uh, Steve had mentioned earlier, you know, knowing where your vehicles are and, you know, running reports for that, for stop time, how long they were at certain customers, all of that is really good. Um, but knowing when and how your vehicles are being used, that's where real power and real information kind of come into play. Go ahead and move on. To help with this, uh, we're really offering a lot of reports that quickly summarize data for you. You know, we kind of get that, that our customers, they have businesses to run, they have things to do. They're not necessarily data analysts. So we've been working really hard to put um, real nice, simple reporting together for you. Stuff that can even just be emailed to you when there's a problem. Uh, stuff that you can access from a device or access from anywhere to really give you that information right away. And if you see that there's a problem um, or something you want to look into, then you can go ahead and dive into that software without spending a lot of time jumping in and uh, trying to analyze things yourself. Go ahead and move on. 
So this slide, not my favorite slide, um, but what I like about it is it's got a lot of uh, really good information on it. I actually ran this for one of our customers yesterday. This is a customer that started with our system just a couple weeks ago. And as you see in the highlighted area, that's their idling. We've kind of talked a little bit about that um, with Clark Environmental and, um, and hangers and whatnot, but here's a, here's a real example of it. So again, this is a new customer. They didn't really think they had a problem. Um, they knew that they had some stuff going on out there, but they didn't think it was this excessive. So they went ahead and put this in place. We ran this, re reviewing the data with them, and they, they've got their work kind of cut out for them in reducing this, and, but a lot of opportunity to save some significant amounts on, uh, on fuel costs. Um, this same report, I, I met with a customer probably three or four weeks ago in Texas, and um, well, a very similar report. And this customer, they were just about to buy some new vehicles. Um, by looking at their fleet utilization, they kind of noticed that there was probably about, yeah, maybe 25% of their vehicles that weren't being used very often. So after shuffling some things around, they found by, by moving uh, different vans to different uh, lots, they didn't actually have to buy anything. So not only can they save on fuel costs and some of those other things, they didn't have to go through that expenditure of buying more vehicles. And um, some great information for them. Go ahead and move on. Now we mentioned a little bit ago the scorecard. This is something else that's really, really important and popular for our customers. Um, what it does is, so with the systems like this, the scorecard will take and take all of the violations you put in place or all the violations or things that the system's collecting, such as hard braking, speeding, idle time, put it all in one report and then stack rank things by your drivers. Um, and it's pretty amazing, like a lot of our customers, what they'll do is they'll take this type of information, maybe put it on like a break room wall, um, or share it with their drivers through individual coaching sessions, what have you. And it's pretty interesting how quickly uh, driver behavior changes once everyone knows there's something in place and these things are being tracked. Another uh, a favorite story of mine is from a customer last year. So they implemented the system, the plug and play system, right, so they just plug it into the vehicle. Um, put it in their, in their vehicles, and after about two or three weeks, uh, we looked at the data together with them. They had one driver that really stood out. It was kind of funny because they said this is one of their best guys. Um, well, their best guy had, oh gosh, I can't even remember, but several hard braking, several speeding, and several fast starts uh, on his report. Well, they thought something must be wrong. So they took the devices out of, they took the device out of his van, and the device from another van, switched them around, waited a couple weeks, and then we looked at the data again, and sure enough, there was the same thing. A lot of hard braking, a lot of speeding, a lot of fast starts. While I was sitting there with them, they actually called his supervisor. His supervisor gets on the phone and is like, yeah, that's Raphael. Raphael's a race car driver on the weekends, and um, we had a feeling this is how he drove. So they got with him and uh, told him about that a few weeks later, looked at the data again, and uh, then and since that time, Raphael has, he still has a few, but uh, the safety violations have decreased dramatically. And uh, that's the type of thing that our customers are seeing with implementing the system. Thank you. So. Like with Clark Environmental, the systems offer the ability to connect to different things. Really, if it's something that turns on, something that turns off, um, the system can be connected to it. And then back in the software, you can actually name that to whatever you want. So in a case of like service vans, tow trucks, things like that, you can connect to the PTO, and again, anything that turns on and off. What's really nice about the service vehicles is that for a lot of our customers, they use that information. So if they know the v, that the engine was running and the PTO was on and that was being used at a job site, they can actually report that information and get um, discounts on their fuel tax reporting. Go ahead and move on. Uh, something else that's real popular to connect to would be service vehicles. So you can have the, the flashing lights, the buckets, and things like that. So again, you're knowing exactly when your vehicles are being used and how they're being used. Go ahead. And again, in uh, public safety, sirens, lights, anything like that, customers can just look at the screen. Let's say dispatchers looking at the screen, 
They know which vehicles are in use. If it's a police vehicle, they know which ones are in pursuit if they didn't know that already. Um, all available direct, directly in the software and also in, within the reports, so they can see any time that was on, as well as duration that those things were on as well. Go ahead and move on. The other way. There we go. Um, and then finally, in, in, again, in service vehicles, knowing how, how a vehicle was used, how long it was used on a job site is really important. You know, in the snow industry, whether it's, you know, plow up or plow down, uh, much like the Clark environmental thing where you can see on the map when that, uh, when that vehicle was in use so you can, you know, see that an entire lot was plowed. What's also really popular is to connect to pumps and sprayers and if you know the throw rates for those vehicles, we can actually do reports to tell you um, product usage on a job site based upon how long it was on and then what that throw rate was. Go ahead and move on. School buses, uh, so we've been working in the school transportation for several years. More and more of our school district customers are putting in these types of devices in their buses. Um, now, for years, they've been using the, the handset tracking or, or the handset options for clocking in and out, uh, maybe doing pre- and post-trip inspections. And now what they're doing as well is using the fleet devices that gives them even more information. So we get the ignition on and off. We can get the stop sign. We can get the front door, the rear door. Um, some will even connect it to the sleeping child button at the back of the bus. And what it's able to do for them is, one, you know, they have all the driver behavior that we've been talking about, but now they also have a complete picture of that driver's day in a single software system without having to access several different pieces to see what somebody did. So you can see exactly what time a driver clocked in, when they did their inspection, when they started the bus, when they actually left the yard, make sure that there wasn't a lot of, you know, time in between, and then see all that driver activity in between, where they made the bus stops, you know, were they compliant by the stop sign going out and the swing arm and all of that? But again, a complete picture of the driver's activity, which also helps when integrating with different routing systems to do planned versus actual. Um, if we have, you know, not just the location, but actual, be able to define the bus stops, they can actually see that all the stops were made, were they made on time, were they too early, were they late, all that sort of thing. Go ahead. Last year, we implemented something new that's also helpful to our customers. So anyone that has temperature-sensitive cargo or temperature-sensitive equipment, the same devices that we're using for all this other stuff, you can connect a, um, a probe to that and actually get real-time temperatures of those things. In addition to that, most people aren't going to stare at a screen and see, like, what the temperature is right now. I mean, who cares about that? What they do is they set thresholds. So if the temperature goes too high or if the temperature goes too low, we set that and it's able, it passes directly through the, to the device on the vehicle, which is constantly measuring it. So if it goes above or if it goes below those thresholds, you can actually get alerts. A good example of that would be maybe a driver's having lunch and or, you know on a break or somewhere and the reefer uh, shuts down on the vehicle. Well, before a system like this, you'd have to hope the driver gets back to the vehicle in time before the cargo uh, goes bad or perishes or melts, what has you. Uh, now that driver can just sit there, get an alert directly on their device, go out and address it before losing the load. Go ahead and move on. So the location, uh, the driver behavior, all of that good stuff is, is, is great. Um, the devices today also give the ability for many vehicles to go ahead and plug directly into the vehicle computer. And with that, we can actually pull back information. So for example, in the, uh, the one that plugs into the OBD port, like what Hangers was talking about, what also what Clark Environmental is using, should an engine light come on in that vehicle, our systems actually capture that right away. And we can report that back to you. We can send an alert on that and not just tell you that, hey, the check engine light is on. We can actually tell you the exact code or codes that were thrown for that check engine light and then take it one step further, giving you the code. You can drill down on that and then based upon your vehicle make and model, tell you what that code means. 
That way you know if it's a critical problem, something where that maybe that thing needs to be taken in for service right away to avoid you know, further damage to the vehicle, um, what have you. But great access to great information, really helping you save on the, uh, on the wear and tear and the, and the maintenance costs. In addition to that, in the, uh, in the application that we have, we have a full maintenance section. So if you want to set up your oil changes, if you want to set up your tire rotations, your brake jobs and things like that, the systems are keeping track of your mileage on your vehicle. So you can actually set up a maintenance plan and base that on time or base that on distance or both. You know, if it needs to happen, you know, every 90 days or every 3,000 miles, you can actually set that up. Your maintenance department or anybody in the system will be able to go into that and look at it per vehicle or per fleet and see exactly what's coming up due, what's past due, um, to help you really manage your maintenance and keep your, uh, keep your maintenance costs low. You can go ahead and move on. Finally, um, I mentioned it a little bit kind of throughout, but um, the systems today, so we have the great fleet devices, right? Then the fleet devices are gonna tell you where your vehicles are, what they're doing, uh, and things like that. Well, we also have the systems that can tie to that for many other things that really, uh, to really help with productivity. So if your people are carrying, you know, whether it be you know, a lot of times regular cell phones, smartphones, tablets, what have you, chances are you can do additional things with that and have that complete picture like I talked about with the schools to see everything that happened in between. So it could be, you know, drivers clocking in and out. Right? So instead of going to a time clock somewhere and then having to walk their vehicles, you can save that five or ten minutes by having them go directly to their vehicles and clock in. Or maybe it's clocking in at home or it's clocking in at the first job site. All of that can be done right through the system tied to the vehicle. Uh, when they clock in, they could identify what vehicle they're driving. So if you have people out there and you have, mul you know, let's say you have multiple vehicles, people drive different vehicles on different days, you can have that, you can know who's driving what vehicle. Uh, by logging that. In addition to that, with our forms application, any type of piece of paper you may have, you can recreate that and make that electronic. Uh, dispatch orders out. What's really cool about the, the orders is you can get proof of service or proof of delivery with signatures. You can get pictures. Also, if you're sending the address, you can have the voice guided directions right on the device. Okay, again, saving on time and fuel costs. Um, and then, of course, we also offer software uh, system integration. So if you have back-end systems, whether it's the GPS data going to a routing software to do some plan versus actual, or whether it's forms, time entry data, or anything like that going to payroll, CRM, or other systems, all of that's available as well. So you can have really a complete system with, to manage all your drivers, your driver behavior, your vehicles, your maintenance, but also everything that happens in between. And that's all I have, Steve. Excellent. Hey, Mike, thank you very much for, for taking the time out. We're, we're very privileged to be able to have someone with, with your kind of education and knowledge about the industry and, and the solutions on the back end to be able to present to us today. And uh, funny how I mentioned before about, you know, people in process and product were kind of those three things that people that are trying to make their businesses more profitable. And when I see things like, you know, taking anything that's on paper today and making it electronic and putting it onto a tablet uh, to be able to really streamline your process, I, I could just imagine and the efficiencies that come with that are uh, just incredible. So uh, great for you to share that part of the story with us, as well as all the other components with the different types of vehicles. And uh, again, I also love the, you know, if it plugs in or if you can use it or turn it on and off, you can monitor it. And that's, uh, that's something that a lot of people forget about. They think the ignition switch is the only thing you can turn on and off, but there's so many other components within those vehicles that we can track with, with uh, products like yourself. So thank you very much for taking the time today. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Well, the, that pretty much concludes our, our presentation uh, for today. Uh, again, I, I want to go back and just kind of reiterate that first slide that I talked about, and I, and I talked about the three challenges that were probably facing you most uh, about fuel cost, maintenance expenses, and safety of your drivers. Uh, and I think you'll see throughout the way today's presentation went, there were so many different ways that that you can control and monitor some of this, uh, some of those three challenges 
uh, that we would certainly love to have that opportunity to talk with you or any of the folks uh, that have presented on the line today to be able to talk with you about that further. Uh, but I do hope the one takeaway that you all get from today is think about what those challenges mean to your business and think about what you could be doing differently to impact that. That to just say, I don't think we have a problem or to say we, we've tried that before and it didn't really work. I, I think you really need to take a serious look at how you manage your fleet within your business and, and find out if there's some opportunities there to improve that. So uh, with that, there's a couple questions that came in throughout, uh, throughout the presentation. Uh, one was a fairly easy one. Can we get a copy of the slide presentation? Uh, and I do believe that is being sent out to those that registered uh, either later today or tomorrow. I don't have an exact date, but I do know that we're, we're, we're talking about having that sent out. Uh, and I have another question on here that talks about, is there any way to capture and manage fuel dispenses from bulk fuel sites? And if I understand what that question exactly means, uh, it, it appears you're looking for kind of tank monitoring. So in other words, when you would open up a valve on a, ta a tank and maybe filling up a, from a tanker to a gas station, and that's what I'm thinking that that might mean. Uh, what I will say, since I don't have the specific on there, we will follow up with you that uh, had asked that question. We'll make sure one of the uh, uh, Sprint executives get, gets back to you and is, uh, gets a chance to better understand exactly what you're trying to, uh, what pro business problem you're trying to solve for there. So I will pause for a moment and then allow other folks to either ask a question. Uh, again, by typing that in on the lower right-hand corner, uh, I'll pause for a minute. If you have another question, feel free to enter that in. Otherwise, it uh, looks like we are going to wrap up here within the one-hour time frame. And I don't see anybody typing at the moment. So. Uh, I think at this point that, that will conclude our presentation. We'll keep this up for just a few more minutes. So if you do log a, a question, we will still get that, even if it is a minute or two after the hour. Uh, so otherwise, thank you very much uh, for, for uh, attending today's call. Again, special thanks to our speakers, Joe Runyon, Logan Kent, and Mike Corder, uh, and again, our host uh, at the very beginning of this, Brian Peach. I do appreciate you having, uh, having Sprint being able to moderate this call for you today. Thank you, everybody, and have a great afternoon. Drive safe.